So our other environment here is um, Ansible. So Ansible is one of the tools available to do um, uh, automation of your environment. Uh, we found that it's very popular with our customers. Um, more and more of our customers are interested in using it. And there's some reasons for this. It's because it's uh, you don't really have to be a programmer to use it. Um, the language is very simple, writing it's using Python, um, use YAMLs, uh, YAML files, um, and it's very easy to read. And I'll show you as you go through. It uses our REST API that's built into Unisphere, um, making the same calls as some of you know, the other tools that we have uh, available also. Um, and we make it available for uh, the PowerMax, but we also make it available for our other uh, storage arrays that we have. Probably the biggest thing about Ansible that uh, customers like is the uh, item potency. Um, it's kind of just a big word to say <clears throat> that you can run the same playbooks over and over again, and it will only do what it has to do. It's fault tolerant. Um, if you've uh, done part of the task that's in the playbook, it will simply skip it, move on to the next one. If you had a failure during a run and you you're, had to rerun it, you could do that. Uh, you can't do that with other utilities like, uh, for instance, um, View Realize Orchestrator. Um, so we have also a plugin for that with workflows. If the workflow for that fails, you've got to go back and fix it and then rerun it. And you can't have any of the objects that are there that were being created because it, it'll fail. Um, Ansible doesn't work that way. It will simply just pop right through. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to come out to my GUI interface here. Um, the first thing I wanted to show, my, I should say my GUI here first. Um, the first thing I wanted to show, I'm using this array. So here are my storage groups. Um, I don't have anything called Ansible, um, which is what uh, we're going to be looking for. The particular script I'm gonna run is gonna create a uh, Ansible host. It's gonna create an Ansible storage group. It's gonna create an Ansible port group. Okay, so. I come out here. So I'm going to look at one of our YAML files. So this is the, one of our playbooks. This is one of the demo playbooks um, uh, one of our uh, engineers created. And what it'll do is it'll go out and create a storage group. You can see down here, it's going to go create a storage group. And you can see how you know it's, it's all readable, right? Create a storage group, create a host, create a port group. And it's going to make these calls which go out to the REST API to actually execute um, the code. And it all derives information from variable files that you create. So you have these variable files over here, which have information about, let's say what you wanna call the host initiators, the port list, the volume list, and then you just call the variable. So it reads the variable list, executes the code. So let's come back out here and we'll run it. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to force a failure while it's running. So we're gonna run this. So I create my storage group and now I'm gonna kick it out. So something happened, you know, my system went down, something went wrong. If I come out to, to the GUI out here and I refresh this here, and check out our storage groups. You'll see here, I have a, an Ansible storage group now, right here, a host, okay? Currently it has no capacity because I killed the script before it even had a chance to add a device to it. So let's just pop right back out. Let's just rerun it without any changes. So here it says, okay, I've got the storage group. I don't need to create that, but I have to create volumes, host, initiator group, port group, and then finally my masking view. So if I pop back out to my interface here, do another quick refresh. And here now I should see that I have a device in my storage group available to me. So you can see here's a storage group uh, device. If I come out into my hosts, I now have a host. And then also if I wanna look and see if I have a mask of view, I have that too. Um, so again, that's the item potency capability. Um, 
I could run it again and again and again. And it would simply recognize things have been created already and just move on. So it's very powerful uh, and it makes life much easier for developers because they don't have to worry so much about putting in all this debugging code. Um, it's just intelligent that way. Are there any questions? So what about other automation and scripting languages? Are those of interest or are you sticking right with Ansible? Uh, no, actually, uh, in the previous presentation, Vince had uh, a number of other ones. We have uh, CSI driver, we have Puppet, um, we have the VRO plugin, as I mentioned, into that. So we're delving into all the areas that our customers are asking us to look into um, to sense. support. So we will have, um, you know, every time I turn around, they're working on a new project um, uh, to make, uh, uh, you know, some availability for um, uh, automation. The benefit, of course, is we have the REST API integrated into Unisphere, right? So yeah. we can make all these different tools and they're all going to drive to the same REST API. So that single point allows us to, you know, expand capability within the REST, which then allows more uh, capability inside of all these um, DevOps tools. Well, and having the Python toolkit there is the fundamental basis that Ansible and some of the other pieces run on also makes it really easy because customers can then say, well, I want to do something different so they can, if they don't, if they can't extend it enough in Ansible, they can drop down to Python and make changes directly in Python code because that's all available sure. to them as well. So, you know, whatever level you want to be at for making changes, you don't start from clean slate. It's never, a, oh, it's a greenfield. I got to go make all the tool. You start from a fairly advanced library and you can minor tune to get exactly what you need for your environment. 